guys. So I've gotten a lot of uh, people hit me up um, on my social media platforms telling me that I should start a YouTube channel. So I think I'm just gonna do it. It'll be, you know, I'll start it out as just a family and friends deal. And if I start getting, you know, a good amount of viewers, that'd be cool. But either way, no big deal. Um, it's out here um, east of Bend. It's a lot snowier than I thought, so I am cutting south quicker than I was originally planned. Sorry, I just ate a bunch of food and I just am like struggling right now. Um, so I am pushing through about, I don't know, six, eight inches of snow out here. Um, enough to be almost dragging my diff. Um, I am just going to go ahead and head through a series of stuff that I've already been through before, but I haven't filmed any of. Um, maybe you've seen some pictures and stuff on my Instagram, but I'm just going to get a good video of everything. So, um, what is that thing? The tiniest little field mouse. I think it's a baby mouse, actually. I think I missed him. Anyway, we're going to go head over to this homestead site, and uh, I will show you guys around it. And then I'm going to try to just pick my way through here. If I have to turn around, I might, I might, because it's just so snowy, and I still don't have the recovery boards those are coming soon um so yeah i will see you guys in a bit once i get to this homestead all right so i'm out here it's not far off the highway this one i actually spot it this is my truck 2005 ford ranger some serious front end damage at one point but i am slowly building it back to at least you know wheelable state Nothing, I'm not gonna go too crazy with rebuilding the header panel and all that, but. Um, so this is the homestead site here. Kind of in selfie mode. I'm probably gonna switch around here. Um, so it looks like it was a nice little dwelling, maybe a two person dwelling at one point. Um, and it was definitely inhabited for a while. Somebody else has been here recently to check it out. Like I said, you can see it from the highway. You just really have to be looking. Um, it's got the old kind of concrete. It's all slowly wearing away. How I know you, how you can tell it was inhabited for so long is how round these um, these little support, these shelf supports are. People dragging their their knees across, their legs across as they were walking in. This is where a lantern would have sat, maybe. <coughs> Here's the inside. Floor supports are super cool in this one. And then the fireplace goes right here because we've got the stove pipe coming out right there. And then this, this stuff's crazy. It's just got, it's got straw in it. I love this little recessed shelf maybe would have provided some insulation if they had a door around it, you know? They could have put some some of their goods that would have perished quicker. It's crazy, the lichen on this. It takes so many years for that to form out here. It's roof support. So cool. I never really looked around in this corner. I think it's kind of a pack rat's nest, but anyway, lots of snow. Generally, you'd maybe be able to find a couple cans and stuff. Here's some stove pipe I'm actually stepping on. Still got the crimp. Looks just like our modern stuff we use today. This ax cut and trimmed. So cool. Just out here on the plains of the high country, Central Oregon. And then, love this wall. You can tell, you know, honestly, I found this a couple of years ago and this wall was a lot straighter than it is. It's gonna fall out soon. Man, I didn't even notice that last time. That's so cool. It's all trimmed with ax. It's almost sketchy to be standing right here. Just look at that cracking, it's just ready to go. The only thing really holding it back is that beam being sandwiched on this side. I 
couple things I'm running on the truck. Uh, as for tires, I'm running the Yokohama Geolander Mud Terrains. They're a little bit cheaper of a tire, but I have had zero complaints um, with them. They're phenomenal. CVT awning, that's a new new piece for me. Got it from a friend of mine. And then uh, I, I just body mounted the Rotopex because this thing was in an accident and it's, I don't care about a couple of holes in the body. So no biggie there. Uh, Coyote Works Trash Roo. I built this rack myself, some sloppy welds and just bolted it to my canopy. Realm Adventure Co case. Only complaint is like, this loves to pop open. But it is what it is. All right, well, I'm gonna get out into that big, beautiful area and maybe down around the backside of Pine Mountain. We'll see, see how uh, the weather goes. All right, guys, so we're just kind of following this fence up here and cutting fresh tracks. Um, and it is pretty deceiving because it looks super smooth with the snow out here, um, but it's still a super rocky, rocky terrain and you can still puncture a sidewall pretty easily. So you always just got to watch your uh, watch your wheel placement and keep uh, keep an eye on any humps in the snow because those humps are most likely some pretty um, substantial rocks. I just wanted to kind of go over what I'm running for navigation and um, emergency stuff. Um, I'm running the Garmin basically full setup. I've got the <laughs> not okay Garmin. Um, running the Garmin Overlander. Um, it's a super expensive unit and if you don't update it, it gets really slow, but I really enjoy that you can just pull it off. I'm just gonna kinda hold off on the driving for a minute here. Pull it off, it's got the magnet mount. You just slap it up. Um, for the safety SOS satellite phone, I'm running the Garmin InReach um, SE Plus. Um, I didn't want the mini because it's just, I don't know. You can take this on hikes and actually nab yourself out with the little map on it. Um, I don't even have it on right now. Um, it's 25 bucks a month for like the freedom plan, which is 40 messages via satellite, custom messages, not the presets. Um, and then I think it's unlimited tracking. So this thing will kind of breadcrumb uh, where you're at out here. So say my fiance wants to check on me and see how my day's going, how far I am through my route she can actually look on her phone and this thing will be um, communicating with my phone and then leapfrogging that info over to her via the Iridium satellite network. So pretty fancy, expensive units, but when it comes to the safety and navigation side of things, I don't like to uh, skimp. Um, power station side of things though, I did go with the Free Spirit 260 watt because um, I wanted to see how Free Spirit Recreation was going to do in the power station market. Um, so far, I've dropped that thing onto concrete like three times out of the back of our Subaru, and I've just beat the hell out of it, and it's still such a trooper. Um, so, yeah, all good there. Uh, I don't think you necessarily need to buy Jackery or, you know, Goal Zero. Um, my brother just got another one. I can't quite remember. What is it? EcoFlow. Um, that's kind of a new up and comer that I've seen and it's the one he got seems super solid as well. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to talk about some electronics. Um, as for the camera equipment, I'm just running a GoPro Hero 10. Um, no medium mod yet. Um, I'll eventually get that. Excuse me. Um, so my audio is a little better, but I um, figured I'd just use my phone and the GoPro for film for now. Um, the new phones are pretty great with the camera quality and so is this GoPro flattening everything out making everything look as wide as it really does in real life it's gorgeous out here all the sparkles off the snow love cutting fresh tracks it's always fun so I'll catch back up with you guys if I find something cool or if I just get into some more interesting terrain so so you guys probably see it on a lot of um, other youtubers channels um, that when you come across a gate like this you want to make sure to leave it the way you leave found it, it the way you found it um, BLM um, doesn't always post the please close the gate signs on them 
um, but it's extremely important to either leave it open if it was open um, or leave it closed if it was closed. Let yourself through. Um, if we want to have this resource to be able to come out and explore um, for coming years, we need to make sure we're diligent about respecting the, um, the gates and the livestock and the grazing out here. So, uh, what are these? I'm like, I guess it's probably just a baby rabbit. I don't know. Maybe somebody in the comments will know. Somebody, one of my friends that likes to hunt. Anyway, just figured I'd give that a little memo. Um, I think I'm gonna head up that way Try to cut around this pine ridge, the back side of it. So, let's we'll see if I can't get into some terrain. It's definitely deep. The snow's definitely um, deep. Love cutting fresh tracks. It's so fun. <laughs> Got the light bar on for no reason, but it's kind of like to turn it on because I don't really get used to it. So, yeah. Here we go. So we are starting to finally tap into the pine forest. It's been a lot of zigzagging through um, fences to get here, but I am headed to Lava Sickle Cave recreation site. See what's going on there. Maybe if there's like a little spot to camp or something, get that notated. But yeah. It's, it's always it's interesting to me how these pines just kind of punch out into the into the open. So I will click this thing back on once I get to that cave. See if it isn't just a little fenced off caged thing or if it's some big huge crazy cool thing. We'll see. Never looked it up or anything, so cross that bridge when we get there. All right, so we're at Lava Sickle Cave. Got the truck locked up. I'm gonna just hike on over here. The snow's super deep, so I'm sure I'll get some wet ankles. Probably start heading back towards town after this. It's nice out here. Nobody's been out here since the snow. All right, so this is said cave. There's not much to it. It looks like there's a little hole that I'll crawl down onto. This is the other side. I do see a couple animal tracks. These are people tracks, actually, which is odd because there was no cars here. Super deep and slick snow here. I want to see what these weird things in the snow are closed year round to protect natural cave resources oh, this is weird I was just kind of trying to figure out what was going on here tracks that have melted so I won't climb in it that's lava sickle cave go ahead and cross that off your list as something to not bother stopping at unless you want to really get into some terribly tight spaces um, wow cool cool area though I mean you could totally camp here and it would be super chill doubt anybody would come see you this snow is just so deep it's it's literally it's drifted it like 18 inches at some points I hear just in the flats these caves are always just out in the flats series of lava tubes that run around here. So get in the truck and start headed home. So I've got an old SD card in this thing and it's only letting me record like 40 seconds at a time. So I'm gonna just end the video here. This is a nice little uh, 
camp spot I found, this is where I would end my night for camping if I were camping tonight. For the Free Spirit Hub tent right there, I would have the truck the other way so I have my awning facing out that way. Nice little fire. I think it's called um, Soda Springs Campground. I'll throw a correction up if that's wrong. We'll see you on the next video for a camp and potentially cooking segment and maybe a little more history. Today was just kind of a shakedown trying to put together a couple routes or put roads together to see how I can punch through to places quicker. So anyway, I will see you guys on the next one.